Hello, my name is Father Gregory Pine, and I am a Dominican friar of the province of St. Joseph, and this is Pines with Aquinas. In this episode, I thought that we could talk a little bit about giving gifts. So, yeah, last week, immortality of the soul, heavy-hitting philosophical description. Uh, this week, gift giving, because why not? Uh, well, specifically because the season during which we will be shopping for or buying gifts for our family and friends is fast approaching, so Christmas is just around the corner. And I think that, you know, we can get better at it. We can become better gift givers. So let's go. Okay, so whenever we get gifts for people, it's typically because we love them. And Professor Eleanor Stump of St. Louis University, when she reads St. Thomas Aquinas, she says that love is a combination of two desires. Desire for the good of the beloved and desire for union with the beloved. So typically when we get gifts... Uh, we're, we're working out of these desires, or we're expressing these desires for the good of the beloved and for union with the beloved. And the gift bears something of that, right? So it's like, all right, this is good for you. And this somehow communicates union with you or cultivates union you know, with you. Okay, you see what I'm trying to do. All right, so, so love is like an operative virtue in this. We're trying to purify our love. We're trying to heal our love. We're trying to grow our love. We're trying to embolden our love, and we want to express that through the gift that we give, so that way it can become part of our, our relationship, right? So that our friendship can, can become yet more excellent still. All right. So love or charity is one operative principle. And the other operative principle, I would say, is prudence. Okay. So prudence concerns doing things. So it's right reason and things to be done. And I think that prudence shoots for a good end. But, you know, sometimes stuff happens and the consequences aren't entirely what you envisioned and sometimes it just stinks so like when you're giving a gift to another person sometimes you're like dude this is gonna hit and then the person opens it and it's very it's just very evident that it did not hit and you're like bummer so don't worry you know you tried basically you're gonna try to affirm your love of the individual to communicate your love of the individual and sometimes it's gonna work and sometimes it's not can't worry too terribly much about the consequences. I actually talk about this in the book that I wrote about prudence called Prudence. Choose confidently. Live boldly. Sweet little advertisement. Oh, yeah. Buy it. It's great. Um, or don't. Do whatever you want. Um, so be, be completely resigned to the fact, abandoned to the fact even, that sometimes you will try and you will fail. But that's okay because the point is to try to grow in gift giving, to become a better gift giver, to cultivate those interior dispositions, which will, you know, work in the end. Eh, and the end is heaven. Okay. So... I would say then, with these kind of background principles in mind, let's be conscious of a few different imperfections, excesses, or defects that can creep into our habit of gift giving. I want to highlight three, and then I'll just talk about how I, how I want to give a gift. Okay, so the, here are three things that can creep into your gift giving. One is you're just overly conscious of the obligation to give, and then that just gets rid of every other consideration. Two, you're overly conscious of your own need to give. All right, and that gets rid of every other consideration. And then three, you're overly conscious of what will happen when you give, like how you can receive subsequently. You're like, okay, not entirely clear, Chief. What are you talking about? Okay, first, conscious of the obligation to give. Sometimes we give because it's expected of us, but we don't really care about it. Okay, so you like have a list of what you've given in the past and you've projected that list out however many years in the future for like your God kid and you're just going down the list and purchasing the things and doing it rotely and repetitively without any real consideration or any real affection. So not ideal, okay? Um, it's easy for you, but the point of gift giving isn't that it be easy for you. I know you're busy. I know you're, I know you're busy. I know you're overwhelmed. I know you want to make, you know, like this whole process of gift giving uh, as painless or as uh, efficient as possible. Um, but, you know, like love isn't that way. I mean, love is principally expressed through sacrifice. So if you want to give a good gift, you're probably going to have to spend time. You're going to have to spend effort. You're going to have to think about it. You're going to have to be a little bit creative. It's going to draw on all your stores. It's going to draw on all your resources. But it's for, you know, the good of the beloved and union with the beloved, which is an, an estimable thing. All right. A good, good thing. So I would say be conscious if you're just operating out of this obligation to give and see if you can like kind of move that along and cultivate a spirit of sacrifice, a spirit of self-donation, which will uh, which will inform your habit. Okay. Second is be conscious of this um, like need to give. All right. So sometimes like people want to give because they want to be the gift giver, right? They want to give you the best gift. They want, they want to be recognized as a good shopper or, or whatever it is, but it's like a kind of need love. This is best described by C.S. Lewis in The Four Loves when he talks about Mrs. Fidget who's constantly fussing over her children 
and she just depresses them with her maternal care, such that when she dies, you know, he says something like, they say of her that she will rest in peace. One thing is sure, her family certainly shall, um, which is a savage indictment. But don't make your gift giving like this kind of oppressive experience where it's like, well, you have to like my gift because I slaved over it, because I prepared for it, because, I, you know, it's like, whoa, 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 a gift is a gift, right? It's something that is yours that you then make theirs and you let it go, okay? Um, and then I would say, yeah, just like maybe, maybe the third point that I've conceived is actually just an addendum to the second point. But be conscious of the give to receive type of phenomenon, okay, that like you're entering into these contractual exchanges. Um, and truth be told, yeah, I don't know, like there, there just isn't, again, the spirit of sacrifice or self-donation. So lots of strings attached. Um, like, for instance, when you give somebody an outing, it can be good, provided that they enjoy spending time with you in that setting. But that won't always be the case. And you got to be conscious of that. Like, sometimes they won't. And that's okay. It doesn't mean you're bad. It just means that it might not, just might not work. Okay. So then, with these two virtues in mind, with these three cautions in mind, what then do we want to communicate or how do we go about it? I would say, first, you want to communicate your love. You know, you want to communicate your care and concern for the individual. And I think one good way to do that is just to be on the lookout. Now, maybe you don't leave the house too terribly much. You don't go in places where things are purchased too terribly much. But when you do, you, you can be on the lookout. You know, you can be thinking of your beloved, kind of holding your beloved in your heart such that when you, you know, stumble across something that might be pleasant to or might be appreciated by, you, you can scoop that up. So that way it's not just like, ah, I stressed out over this for a few seconds right before Christmas came. It's actually like I have the habit of bringing you with me wherever I go. So I saw this and I saw this and I saw this and I picked them up. They might not like cost very much, but it's like this reminded me of the thing that we did together and I got you the sticker and this reminded me of the thing that we did together and I got you this whatever. Who cares? I mean, the point is you communicate your care and concern. Yeah, good. Uh, second thing is, you know, it's, it's good to try to buy something significant for the other. Um, and I think it's helpful here to buy something f that they will use, you know, something that they will enjoy at some way or in some way, um, and maybe something that they wouldn't ordinarily buy for themselves. Okay, so like I'm going to use some examples about me. I don't want you to give me gifts. Actually, I forbid you from giving me gifts, um, but like I don't have many things and I want to keep it that way. All right, so I don't like receiving things that can't be drunk or smoked or eaten or um, that's a reference to cigars, by the way, the smoking thing. Um, that's not a reference to other things, just to be clear. Um, or just used up, okay? Um, so I like to receive things that can be used up. For instance, even though I'm Dominican, I do not like acquiring books because I've always been assigned in convents with great libraries. And people are like, you're a book guy, here's a book for you. It doesn't always work out that well. That's not to say, you know, like never give anyone books, but just to say, okay, um, something that is significant to you that you'll appreciate that you can use up in my case and that won't kind of like burden you with stuff to move around the world. Um, and things that, you know, you wouldn't buy for yourself. Uh, so, you know, like typically in religious life, you either make a direct request for any use of money or you have a small stipend each month. And when you look at that, you know, and you take into effect or you take into account the other things for which you need pay, you don't often buy like luxury items. And here I don't mean like yachting off the coast of Antibes. I mean like a candle that smells nice, like men's religious houses, for instance, just smell neutral or bad for the most part. Um, but like every once in a while, you know, it'd be nice to have a little autumn wreath burning on your on your counter. Now, Yankee candles are wildly overpriced, but they sometimes have three for one sale, you know, so okay, you see where this is going. Buy something for the individual that he or she wouldn't ordinarily buy for themselves. So that way it's like a gift. It's not just like you made an Amazon shopping cart and then I got some of those items for you. You would have bought them yourself, but I bought them for you, so I'm just an extension of your wallet, okay? So this is, you wanna buy something significant, something that they wouldn't buy for themselves, um, or yeah, can't buy for themselves, okay. Um, and then last is you wanna, you wanna buy something or give something that grows love, that grows communion, okay? You want them to be happy, you want them to feel seen, known, loved, and you want it to be something that kind of calls them forth into that space of exchange or sharing or whatever it is. So it's like, hey, you know, a new brewery opened up and I got you this cool little sampler pack and maybe, you know, we could have a couple at one point or we could check out the brewery later, no pressure, something like that. It's like, cool, I was thinking about you. I know you like, you know, cheap American beer. Here we go, or like cigars, you know, like I got a couple of nice cigars. If you want to smoke them at some point, I'll just give them to you. You know, if you want to smoke them, smoke them whenever. But if you want to smoke them at some point, I got myself a few sticks, you just let me know. Um, because smoking a cigar is an easy way to have an hour and a half conversation, which you might not otherwise have, okay? 
or like, you know, like Chick-fil-A gift certificate or like a certificate to a coffee shop, things that can be done communally, things that can be done together, but needn't necessarily be so the person's free. Um, yeah. So, I'm, yeah, I mean, like, those are all just thoughts. Maybe it reveals more about my personality than it does real about reveal about gift giving in general. But I think that love and prudence in the background with a consciousness that we're not just operating out of an obligation to give or of like our own need to give, but out of this genuine spirit of sacrifice and self-donation and that we're trying to communicate care and concern. We're trying to get something significant and we want to ultimately grow the love and communion of that friendship, be it with a family member or a friend or whomever. Okay. So these are some thoughts. Oh, and a final thing, I would say don't buy religious art for religious or for priests unless you are nearly certain that it is going to work. Because my experience is that priests and religious have pretty well-developed tastes when it comes to religious art. Not necessarily the best taste, but well-developed tastes. And the chances that you find something within their wheelhouse just by accident is pretty low, okay? So don't just do the, okay, this person likes Jesus, I'll get him a Jesus thing. Because this person probably already has all the Jesus things and that your Jesus thing corresponds to his or her Jesus thing. I don't know. Chances aren't great. So those are my thoughts about giving gifts. Um, I want to highlight a few opportunities for you uh, that you can give gifts during this kind of giving season around Thanksgiving and beyond. So Giving Tuesday being a big opportunity. So first, to support Pints with Aquinas. So Matt has those opportunities for you. Uh, and certainly he promotes his locals uh, page or account with some frequency, but consider if you haven't yet making a donation to Pints with Aquinas to support the good work that he does. Certainly, you know, paying for the guests that he has on his channel, for their travel, for their lodging, for their stipend and things like that being a big, a big ticket item and all the investment that goes into that. Um, and then also, uh, I, I've mentioned previously that I contribute to a podcast called God's Planning. Right now, we're having a fundraiser to raise money for retreats. And basically, the point is to lower the cost of our retreats. So all the money raised will go to lowering the cost of retreats for this upcoming summer and fall. Because it, retreats shouldn't be so expensive. But the way that prices are at retreat centers, they become expensive, especially when you add and travel. So we want to reduce those obstacles, impediments, so that as many people can come and have a good experience as possible. So yeah, you can check that out at godsplaining.org. And then the last thing is, like I said, I'm a, I'm a Dominican friar of the province of St. Joseph. And right now the province of St. Joseph is raising money. It's called the Matching Challenge for Vocations. And you can find uh, more information out about that at dominicanfriars.org. So that goes towards the formation of Dominican friars. You know, like myself, I was there not seven years ago. Um, so for their philosophical and theological studies and their formation more broadly, so that way they, be can come, they can become preachers of grace and they can be sent into the world for its conversion unto the glory of God and the salvation of souls. So three opportunities. Pines with Aquinas, support Matt through his locals page. Um, God's planning, support this uh, retreat appeal fundraising effort so as to lower the cost of retreats for those who would like to attend them. And then finally, check out dominicanfriars.org for the matching challenge for vocations as a way by which to support this province of St. Joseph in its efforts at forming young men for the uh, evangelical task before us. All right, that's all I wanted to share. Uh, this is Pines with Aquinas. If you haven't yet, please do subscribe to the channel, push the bell, and get further updates as they come forth from on high. Know of my prayers for you. Please pray for me, and I'll look forward to chatting with you next time on Pines with Aquinas.